Hey there, and welcome to this very spontaneous video. Um, I was actually out taking a walk, and I was was thinking about a lot of stuff. And and because I get a lot of people that email me about how do I get a job, how do I get my first dev job, and I think that's a very very difficult question to answer to because it can vary depending on a lot of stuff. Uh, depending on the company, depending on the country you live in, and depending on what you do, what what's your specialties and stuff like that. How how is your personality? A lot of these factors that can influence on how do you get your first dev job. But I wanted to tell you a little about my own story and what I think and what I believe truly from my heart is very important when applying for a job. It can actually be any job, I think, but uh, it's more important if it's your first job and you feel like you're a junior. And I know also by own experience that the hardest part to overcome is actually that you may suffer from a little bit of, of uh, bad confidence when you're new and you haven't had a job in that field before. You, you feel small, you feel like, yeah, it's probably too advanced for me and stuff like that. And I think that's the first thing that I want to tell you, that when you read an ad from a company, you see all this stuff that you need to know to, to apply for this job. And they want, as I always say, they want someone with 20 years experience, but you don't need to have worked more than one year. So that equation don't add up. So I think it's always like this when you read those job ads, they want so much and you should know something that there's not one job that I had where you actually do all this stuff that they need. Because when you read those ads, it feels like they need a superhuman, a superhero or something. And they often also use the word as superhero and stuff like that. I think, to be honest, I don't like that at all. And they want you to know all this stuff. And then when you actually start the job, it's nothing like that. You'll end up doing some CSS 90% of the time, so, or, or no, not maybe CSS. And I shouldn't talk bad about CSS because CSS is cool. I actually love uh, coding in CSS. And I know a lot of people also say that CSS is not coding, but I actually think it is. But my main point is that you shouldn't be afraid when you read all those job ads because there's no one that can live up to everything they have in the job ads and everything you should know. And they have this list of stuff of thousand things you should know. And I, I, that also comes down to what I, I think my primary message in this video is that there's one thing that you should have, and that is you need to have the will. I don't say that you need to have the passion for something because in the end it's only a job, but you should have the will to learn and you should show it to them that you want to learn and absorb new knowledge and, and Show them that, show your personality, because in the end, it's always the personality that matters. They will know for sure in roughly, probably one minute if they want to hire you, when they start talking to you, when you go to an interview. Uh, so, so I think the most important thing is to show them that you have the will to learn and that you want to work for that company. Companies and people working at the company love to hear compliments about them. So, so you should compliment and maybe in some ways, maybe exaggerate on what you think about the company. But for me, at least, it's always been a job. It's always a job. And in the end, a job isn't that that matters the most. That matters the most to me, at least, is my family and friendship and people. That's the most important. So I think show them that you want this job and you can deliver and that you want to learn more and also, there's also a lot of questions on what do you need in your portfolio? What products do you need in your portfolio? Uh, and I think uh, that's also kind of a difficult question to answer because it will vary a lot on the recruiter that is interviewing you because some, they don't look, they don't even, they don't even look at your portfolio or your GitHub account or something. They will have a task for you probably that you should do. And But I think it's important to have a kind of a... a very practical projects in your portfolio that show some stuff that you probably will use in the real world, so to say, in a real job. Uh, I think that's very important. You may have some projects. For example, if you work with React, as I do, you should have some project that shows that you can handle state and also props and maybe some forms to fill in because 
forms is quite common on almost all web applications. Uh, and you probably also should have something that shows that you can handle an API to get external data from an API and stuff like that. So it doesn't have to be a super cool project. And it can actually be a lot of small projects where you showcase this. So you don't have to have this very large project, large application where you show everything of this in one application. And there's actually been cases when I have, for example, my movie application in my courses. Instead of doing the task for the company that they provided in the interview process, they asked me to actually talk about that movie application because they already saw that one and they can see that I know the stuff. So they just wanted to hear me argue about that product instead. So I didn't have to, to, to actually do their kind of usual product that they have in their recruitment process. So I think it's important to show off those basic stuff that you need to know. For example, if you apply for a React job, there are some basic things that you need to know to be able to code in React. So that's how I've done it. And there's also one important thing, I think, and it's not for all of you, I know that. I think today, by far the most thing that gets me recruiters to contact me is my courses and actually my YouTube channel and all the stuff I do here. Because they see my channel, they see my courses, and they know that I know my stuff, and they can see all my videos. And, and that's been a really boost for me for getting clients. But I know it's not for all. And to be honest, I, I feel actually a little bit uncomfortable doing all this social media and stuff like this. But I actually love it also in some sense. So it's some kind of hate love I have, have to it probably. But if you feel that it's you that can have a channel like this and create your own videos or create courses and stuff like that, maybe write blog posts, that is a big boost when you need to show something when you apply for a job. Uh, and I think that's about it. That's what I had in my head now when I was out taking a walk and I felt like I just want to talk about this stuff for you guys because I love to help people and I want to help you to get a job. And I, the only way I can do it is to talk about my own experience. I can't tell you exactly how to do stuff because it can be in so many different ways and everyone has their own path to walk, so to say. So, But I can talk about my experiences during my lifetime. And also you should know that I don't have an education in coding. I have taken a few small courses. So you don't need to have an education to get a great job in development as so many think. I think it's, for me, it's mostly about passion and that I show the will to, to, to always learn more and, and add my drive to succeed and that I want to learn new stuff. I think that's what gets me the jobs. So hope this gave you something and hopefully I see you in another video. And if you like my stuff, please subscribe to my channel. I really love your support and I want to get more followers. I want this channel to grow so that I can spend more time creating more awesome stuff for you guys. So, see you in another one.